Jeremy for Ink and Expeditions, and I'm back in Boca, Colorado, on the Mother of God River in the Peruvian Amazon. Hang on to your hats and glasses as we head into the Amazon, and we're doing it solo style. This solo rafting trip will take us over 100 miles to Peruvian jungle, from the town of Boca, Colorado to Labyrintho. It's gonna get mucky. It's gonna get sluggy. The obstacles start small, Alpaca wrap versus razor grass. And get worse. A machete or turn back, it's one of the two. I've brought my hammer, but I'm gonna have to cut my way in. I'm on a scouting mission. On the search for canals, which are just big enough for me and my boat. And I find it. It takes me to a beautiful Oxbow Lake. It's the perfect canal. Until. We've got over 100 miles to go, so let's get to it. Day one, and I set off. I've got my whole trip in front of me. I'm somewhere between Manu National Park and Puerto Maldonado. The river's moving along just fine, although sometimes it feels like a moving lake. And then I hit a slow section and start to paddle through it. A local couple notices, and they decide to stop to help. So, so this guy just gave me a tow for a little bit and he, he thought I wanted to get on board. And I said, no, no, I'm just doing my thing. And he said, okay. I see my first stop ahead. There is a canal which parallels the river. And we're gonna try and go through this. That canal is about 260 meters that way. So let's do I pack up and head in, curious to see if it's doable. I find some tapir tracks and decide to follow them. Maybe they've got the right idea. Unfortunately, it leads me to knee-deep muck. I start hacking my way in, but it looks bad. I'm so determined. I'm not giving up yet. For about 20 minutes. All right, I'm not doing it anymore. The problem is there's not enough trees. That means more sun gets to the floor and more of this crap grows. I slip. I'm trying anything I can to get back. I'm using this fallen tree as a bridge. I've overexerted myself and I've lost my way. I'm anxious to get back to the river where it's 10 degrees cooler. Well, that killed me. Let's not work so hard, okay? I'm back to the river and I'm beat red, exhausted. I've got to cool down. I bet you it's 3 p.m. It's hot. That's why there's nobody out here, no animals, no birds. Not the time to be out today. We finally get to see the canal. Unfortunately, it's the end of it. So let's go over there and check it out. Further down river, I find the exit to this canal I hope to reach, and I paddle in. On the banks, I find Ornedos, which are looking for food. Well, I was talking with a local here. His name's Carillo, and he's got a boat he could take us up there, Take. Uh, you know, it goes up like 10 kilometers. And um, he says it gets wider, actually, up there. And he's, he's making jokes, saying that uh, the piranhas are gonna eat me. And there's electric eels, that's cool. I know the piranhas don't eat you, it's just uh, in the movies, but we're joking. He's a cool guy. He lives up here about three kilometers. So next time I'm gonna paddle up there and stop in at his house and 
see if he wants to work a deal so he can carry us up the river and we'll just float out like I'm doing right now. I paddle back out to the mother of God and then a few feet down I find another detour. I can just barely maneuver some of the obstacles in my way. Up ahead, it looks like it opens up. The water temperature here is much warmer compared to the river, and I know the piranhas are just beneath my boat. Anyone wants to know if you can pack raft in a piranha lake, we're doing it now. Got a couple of the Tarikaya turtles. The yellow spotted Amazon river turtle can live up to 70 years. And these butterflies are after turtle tears, which contain salt, a mineral which is very hard to find. I find a skimmer who's diving for fish. I'm sure he doesn't want to be in the water too long. I find a small town which wasn't marked on the map. Como se llama ese pueblo? Pacal. Pacal. Muy bonito. Ya va a salir en el video. Muy, muy, muy bonito. <laughs> yeah, estrella de YouTube. YouTube. Ya, yeah, chao, gracias. Sí. Sí, sí, falta mucho. Muy falta mucho. Gracias, muy mal. Ya, yeah, gracias. I paddle ashore, hack my way in, and hang my hammock. Day two, and I'm back on the river. It rained most of the night, and it's still drizzly. I paddle into a shallow, sandy beach, and I'm swarmed by black skimmers. These skimmers have lower mandibles, which are much longer than the uppers. This allows them to skim the surface of the water and to scoop up fish. Well, I'm gonna call this Skimmer Beach. It's obvious I, uh, I pissed them all off. So, we'll get going. Back there we had Skimmer Beach and we'll call this Snowy Egret Beach. In fact, what we have here are snowy egrets and roseate spoonbills. Have a look at the juvenile spoonbills with the snowy egrets. Then overhead I spot a crested katakata, one of the largest falcons in the world. It's time for lunch, so I pull up to a beach, but there's some rustling behind me. Squirrel monkeys, black capped to be exact. Saimiri boliviensis, or peruviensis. These guys eat fruits, insects, and even tree frogs. But when there's none of that around, they'll even drink nectar. Their daily activity of foraging keeps them active and social. If you want one as a pet, you better have a big yard. I decide to have a look at the creek to see if I could raft it. Instead, I find a rusty mining rig. Back to the river and around a bend with skimmers whizzing by and it's still drizzly. It's getting cold. I've still got a long way to go. A few kites are riding a vent right up above me. It's late in the afternoon now and it's time to set up my camp. And so I just started hacking my way inside of the canopy. Let's go finish the job. I would always prefer a hammock over a tent, but sometimes it requires more work. I often have to cut my way into the interior to find the trees. Inside the forest, I'm safe from any flash floods. I also get to spend time with the night birds, the crickets, and whatever else. 
about 12 to 13 feet, which is about right for the hammock. Day three. Last night I had a tapir come straight towards my camp and I yelled at him, so he freaked, freaked him out. So he went another direction. Then later that night, I heard him down at the river. He broke a branch and he fell right in the water. They're real big. They're the biggest things out here. Imagine a little rhinoceros barreling through the forest, breaking whatever's in its way. And you'll know that's what it is. Oh, look. Breakfast comes right to me. Breakfast for one. My search continues. Well, I found another canal, but it's not primary forest, which is what I'm looking for. So let's see if there's any better ones further down river. So I found another one uh, that goes this way. The entrance is there, and uh, it looks like it goes for a ways according to my GPS map. So, but we gotta get some, through some crap over here, but let's check it out. Up ahead, there's more hacking, and it's too much work. And this one probably goes to Laguna Indara. But again, I'm not feeling very ambitious. These, uh, you can see the bamboo. They must be falling all over along this thing, just like this thing here. So, on to the next one. Reminds me of one of those, those blow-up doll things that you see at gas stations, you know, the guy that does this. Only a few days in and I'm already losing it. I don't know why. <laughs> By the way, to go from this to this, you need a pre-filter. In this case, I'm using a Milbank bag, which takes some of that crap out. And then from this, I'll pump it into here using a filter. And this guy's got this one blown. In this area, there are lots of canals. Oh, Some seem better than others, but I haven't found that perfect one yet. It's time to camp again, so I pull up to a sandy beach. Definitely gringo. Maybe ocelot? Ocelots are medium-sized cats from a half up to a meter in length. There's the cat scratch, right? That's what cats do, right? They poop, and then they scratch. Here's one of my cooler campsites. Check this out. Here's my door, but look, I've got to step up. Day four, and I start with some coffee next to the river. Good morning. We're more than halfway to Labarinto, but we still have a couple places to check out. So let's get rafting. So I found another one. Let's have a go. Maybe this is it. The canal I've been searching for. At one point I have to take a section of my paddle out because it gets too narrow. But the size of this canal is perfect. It's just deep enough for me to get through. Any motorboats are gonna have a real hard time getting up this thing. I'm loving it already. The shade, the sounds. This is the Disneyland Jungle Cruise. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Something shady so I'm not burning up. And with lots of birds. And um, I'm operating sure there's piranha in, uh, here. So I'm about a mile in when I find a path. So I docked my boat from the canal, which continues because I went over and I found this. Lake. And it looks like we've got it all to ourselves. So let's check it out. I, I think what I'm gonna do is take this canal up further and see if it connects to the lake because the canal does have a flow out, so it might be coming from this lake. That way we can just paddle in and not have to drag the boat over. All right. I go deeper, and my curiosity grows with every few feet that I paddle in. It's just me and the forest. No time limit, no rules. 
This is what pack rafting means to me. I can get a sense of the age of this canal by looking at the tree roots. I don't think anybody has been up here before. With every turn, there are more overhanging trees, vines, and kingfishers. A fallen tree blocks my path, but it's cool. Two miles in and the sky opens up, and now I'm headed into thicker vegetation. Well, it looks like it's time to get out the machete or turn back. It's one of the two. I managed to get a view of the lake by standing on the pack raft. I decided to just pull my boat through without my machete, and it seems to be working. I've made it. This lake has no name as far as I know. Here we are, lilies, dragonflies, and Hudson up in the tree, stink birds. Stink bird refers to its foul odor, which comes from fermenting swamp vegetation in its gut. Do you hear the horn screamers? Well, as hard as it seemed to get here, um, I got a better feeling about the smaller lake. And besides, I see a spoil tip there for mining. And way back there, there's another spoil tip. So who knows, they were here and they drove some, some of the animals out. Or, I don't know. Um, but let's try the smaller lake. That means I gotta go back through the lilies and the reeds and um, back through the canal and then get out um, where I got out before. So let's do that before lunch. Now heading back out of the canal, there's a slight flow outward. You can kind of see this is it, which is twice as good as coming up against it. Again, I'm back in it. My element. I really don't know if anybody's been up here before or how long it's been. So here's how it's gonna go. Canal, campsite, and lake. My next objective is to paddle this smaller lake. I also have <clears throat> fairly clear water compared to the river and little fish. There's a little caiman. This time, I'm being watched by a small caiman. He's small, but where there's small ones, there's big ones. And a little fly catcher. I want to get out to the lake, but it's this stuff. And I don't even know how, or you know, that would take some work to get across it. And because, but it, it, the whole lake is like that. It has this ring of grass, which is tough. But anyway, uh, and it's not the caiman, okay? There's no caiman in here. There's probably big ones in the big lake. It's not that, it's just it's too much work and I'm spent. Enough excuses. Let's give it a shot. I decide to go ahead with it anyway. I often debate myself, which gets me through no solo trips. But the little grass, it looks like it, it looks like it's really shallow. The grass mare stems look like they're at the surface of the water, so maybe it's shallow and maybe I can walk across. Almost there. Here's what I did. This is like a razor grass 
Alpaca raft versus razor grass. And look how clear the water is. Compare that to the river. Wow, what a difference. Now paddling this hidden and forgotten lake, I find a pair of waddle jacanas, easily identified by their giant feet, which allows them to walk on free-floating aquatic plants. I paddle to one end of the lake to take in the view. And then to the opposite side to see what I can find. I can hear more hoatsin, parrots, and parakeets. And I'm constantly surrounded by dragonflies. I paddle right into some water hyacinth. And I just sit there. Some hoatsin in the distance are disturbed. And I think I know what it is. And here we go. It's another troop of black cap squirrel monkeys. And they're coming out of the woodwork. One by one, they trek through the trees and occasionally notice me. This is their afternoon retreat and they're munching berries along the way until they disappear into the forest. I find my hole and slither back across the grass. My daily duties are done and I set up my hammock and tarp. For this shot, I could hear the caiman but couldn't find them. Now I see two. Can you find them? With the sun going down, it's dinner time. And I share a little bit with the fish. Day five, I realized this path was formed by caiman, their round bellies flattening the leaves along the way. I'm now heading back to the river. And I've got an eerie feeling. And there's this bird that seems to be warning me. Up ahead, I see it and I approach with caution. Did you see the caiman? He was big. You know, Hollywood's done a good job at making out these piranhas and caiman in the jungle out to be a nightmare, but in fact, it's not like that at all. At least not here. I know there's man-eating crocodiles in other parts of the world, but here in Peru, in the Amazon, everything's scared of everything, and most of all of you. They're not after your boat, or your mosquito net, your inanimate objects, they're not gonna go after that. They're not gonna go after anything bigger than they are because it's not an easy target for food. Tic-tac bath kit. But there are some who lie about how it really is down here. Maybe they wanna sell their movie or their book. It's in their best interest. Don't let this keep you from visiting. Also, if you're planning on an expedition, 
any misinformation can be dangerous or it can be deadly. If someone says they've done it, I sure hope they have. Otherwise, it could steer you in the wrong direction. I'm standing at the Inambari River and Mother of God River confluence. Kind of a cool spot. Two major rivers join. The Madre de Dios to the left and the Inambari to the right. Welcome to the land of spoiled tips. There's no gold in these piles. The reason they put these sticks in here is so that when the river rises, the boats don't run into the piles. Just ahead, it's my final stop. Well, here we are arriving in Labyrinto 100 miles later. If you'd like to do any of these trips, send me an email. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for any upcoming new expeditions.